Hey guys, welcome to the Danny McDermott Show. I am so glad that you guys are here tonight because it's going to be an amazing show. I'm very excited about it. Uh, again, I'm doing the show from John Lennon's old mansion here in the Hollywood Hill. Uh, so I was like, eh, green screen, eh. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I've, I'm out in LA again. I'm actually getting rid of my apartment and I'm going to be back in New York for, for a little bit because I want to be near my son who is now 15 and six foot two. He's my height. Uh, and he's, uh, he's awesome. So hi, Kevin. How are you? I'm doing great, Danny. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I, well, actually I gotta, I gotta thank everybody who's been working on the show this week, especially my engineer, Susanna, because, uh, <laughs> I have been just all over the place and I didn't get to look at everything till last night and rewrites and last second things. And I, Thank you guys all for that. I appreciate that. So anyway, happy Wednesday. Uh, so as always, I'm joined with my uh, co-host, the effervescent Kevin Fitzgerald. I'm effervescent. Well, you, you, you're bubbly. So you're saying I'm gassy. Well, yeah, that too. But that's besides the point. <laughs> I'll take it. I'm glad you're in L.A. Otherwise, I'd have to believe you're outside my window. Oh, no, no, no. I can just smell it from here, Kevin. Uh, <laughs> anyway, 20, 2021 has gotten off to a weird start, huh? It snowed in Los Angeles this weekend. Are we talking cocaine or, or the real snow? Kevin, this is a family show. Actual snow, okay? I flew from New York to Los Angeles last week to escape the snow, and now I've got COVID, hot spot, and snow. It's snowvid, or maybe it's you. Yeah, that's a great snow joke, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> How was your week? It was great. Lots of snow. My son's birthday. Ah, that explains it. Your son son's birthday wish was to dump snow on both coasts. What does he have against me, Kevin? Snow was a fraction of the cost of a PS5, Danny. I had a compromise. <laughs> well, you should have <laughs> just done what I did for, Chris, for Christmas. Uh, I got him a PS5. Of course, now I got to get a second job. Well, maybe you could go shovel in Malibu. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they do have snow there. I could, I could go door to door and actually, you know, what, what, how much is it? 20 bucks a driveway now? Uh, I don't even know. <laughs> you got to charge Malibu prices when you're in Malibu, Danny. <laughs> <laughs> snow in Malibu. I can't believe it. The apocalypse is near. Was that a haiku? Because <laughs> that was 17 syllables and it was awesome. Was it really? <laughs> yes. Well, it's funny you should mention poetry, Kevin, because it is National Cowboy Poetry Gathering Week. Yeehaw! <laughs> so <laughs> that's the best I could do. Uh, the festival began. No, I can do better. The festival began in 1985 in Elmo, Nevada, and it's taken place every year since. I don't know. <laughs> a long time because it was just erased by one of my writers. <laughs> <laughs> Did, you <laughs> Did you know about this, Kevin? Uh, completely unaware. Well, sadly, because of COVID, the gathering has been canceled for 2021. So that's that's terrible, terrible news, Danny. Yes, it is. It's truly awful. A traditional art form. Cowboys sing about the hardships they've faced over the years, the loneliest, harsh weather, random coyote attacks, spoons falling. Now now a pandemic shuts the whole thing down. I guess they'll have to sing. I, I mean, I guess they'll have more to sing about next year, though, right? Yeah, maybe we should honor the great cowboy poets by doing some of our own cowboy poetry. You know what, Kevin? That is a fantastic idea. That is a fantastic idea. I. I you know what? I'm... I can't, you brought it up, and I just happen to have all this stuff here. <laughs> Do you have a cowboy hat, Kevin? I got a Yankees hat. Oh, that's close enough. Close enough. All right. All right. I just just so the fans know, I do not play the guitar, <laughs> but I'm going to try for this. <clears throat> all right. I'd like to dedicate this poem to my horse Elmer. For years on the trail, we were stuck together cause that's, <laughs> that's what best friends do. But you slipped on some stones and you broke your leg bones and now you're Elmer's glue. 
that's as far as I got. That was a sad, sad story, partner. Now, it's all right because we're stuck together like glue. Get it? <laughs> How about you, Kevin? You have a cowboy poem you'd like to share? You're darn tootin' I do. All right. <laughs> that was a horrible accent, too. All right, here we go. Ready? I'm ready. There once was a horse from Nantucket. No, wait, 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 hold on. What are you doing? Hold on, hold on. Cowboy poetry. What are you doing? Kevin, that's not cowboy poetry. Cowboy poetry has got to come from the heart, from experiences that you've dealt with. You know, you got to dig deep down. You know, you got to feel it. You know what I mean? Wait, wait. Okay. I got it. You sure? Okay. All right. Here so. we go. There once was a rancher named Enos who had an 11 inch. Whoa, 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 whoa. Kevin, what are you doing, man? <laughs> I told you this was a family show, man. You're not capturing this cowboy spirit, bro. Good. Depends on what type of cowboy you're talking about. What are you, ta what are you talking about? You're reciting dirty limericks, bro. <laughs> uh, listen, I'll have you know, my grandfather was one of the original Staten Island buckaroos. What buckaroos? What the hell is that? Is it there were cowboys in New York? Well, the the buckaroos were his bowling team, but they had little horses on their shirts and everything. Okay, okay, <laughs> okay, Kevin. <laughs> All right. Well, that was a good tribute to the cowboys. <sighs> I like cowboy hats because they don't really mess up your hair. I like my poetry <laughs> better than your song. But we're both going to have to move on, Danny. <laughs> well, yeah, I guess we are. I guess we are. All right. Uh, I'm excited, though. This is a good show tonight, man. I'm excited. Uh, we got a great show. We got uh, Perry Kurtz, uh, Ask Anthony, and our first guest, who is a seasoned actor, writer, and comedian. Uh, you've seen him in movies and television. Um uh, TV shows, you've seen him on Showtime, Netflix, Comedy Central, CBS, NBC, and many others. Please welcome JD. Welcome, JD. I think I think you're you're muted, JD. <laughs> I'm trying to stick go. with tradition where like the first guest has to figure out are they muted or not? Are they gonna let the host do it? Are we just gonna remix? Uh, <laughs> we're good, we're good. Hello, everybody. What's up, buddy? What are you drinking there? Uh, so, a Atlanta based uh, beer, a Georgia based beer called Sweetwater. It's a 420 strain. So, it's, uh, it, it tastes like, uh, like marijuana, but it's beer. Really? Yeah. Now, do, do, those, do those actually work? Do they make you, do they give you a, 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 like a weed buzz? Not at all. Not at all. It's Not just so, all. I can, so I can feel bougie over here. No big deal. You know, a real pothead celebrates uh, 420 every like twice a day. Yeah, no, I like it. I, I would have, I would have done that just now, but I, uh, I forgot. So there you go. Morning uh, and night. I like your, I like your songs about cowboys. I'm here in, based in Dallas, Texas. And are um, you? Yeah, I feel like if the Cowboys could have made the playoffs, that could have been a number one hit for you guys this year. So just maybe <laughs> <next year>. right. <laughs> That's what I was planning on. Yeah, double the wins double. next year, and they'll be right there. Right, <laughs> they're great. I love them. I love them. I live here, so you have to. So, so uh, uh, let's see. We watched uh, a video that. Oh wait a minute, hold on. So you you what sketch? Now you worked on the Chappelle show, right? I was a writing consultant for season three. Yeah. Okay. All right. Now, how did that come about? Um, I'll give you the short version of the story. Um, I, I met Dave at the improv in Houston back in probably, I think it was 2006. And, uh, he just signed on for season three and four. And, um, at the time he had a, a forum. So his website was just a forum. Um, and I would submit like sketch ideas on there and whatnot. And I was a, a moderator and admin on that thing. And, um, at any rate, I, I meet Dave at the improv. He says he's been checking out some of the sketches. He thought they were funny and, um, asked me to send some. And so what I did is I sent 
and, and I, I do everything like really unorthodox. So I, I sent three envelopes uh, all in one package. The first envelope was a cover letter, just saying like, hey, thanks for the opportunity. Um, it had a picture of me and Dave and a picture of me and his handler at the time. And the second envelope was my uh, sketches all typed out. And then the third envelope was my sketches uh, handwritten on toilet paper. And in the cover letter, I said something to the effect of, if you don't like my sketches, feel free to wipe your ass with them. And it was an instant hit. So <laughs> and they hit me up for more sketches. And I sent, I think it's like a total of seven out there. So wait, wait, you said you're saying you wrote it on toilet paper. I did. <laughs> I, I typed it up on, I typed it all full, like all legible. Like, but then I actually, I got toilet paper and I just wrote every single, <laughs> every single word out on with pen on toilet paper. It's commitment. Well, let me tell you, the best toilet paper to use for that is 7-Eleven toilet paper. I've learned that this weekend. <laughs> okay. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Also, if you need to sand the deck, you can just you know, <laughs> pop outside, take care of that too. So it's true, man. I, I ran out of I, I ran out of toilet paper because I had a couple guests over, and you know how guests like they they just think toilet paper comes off of trees, and uh. <laughs> But these guys use so much toilet paper, I had to run out. And the only place, I didn't want to go to the store and wait in line. So I went to 7-Eleven. And I go, oh, they got toilet paper here. It's like parchment paper. It really is. It's, it's, right. it's, it's yeah. So if you ever need to send any more to Dave Chappelle, that's how you do it. Oh, it's, it's good to know. I feel like casting director for years has been using my headshots as toilet paper. So I'll, uh, I'll have that <laughs> back the back of the That gives some images. Anyway, uh. So you were living in Oklahoma, uh, but you live in Dallas now. Now, Oklahoma. Now, there you go. Now I, uh, I, you know, I've done the road. You do the road a lot. Uh, what is how? How was the difference between the audiences in Oklahoma and in Dallas? <clears throat> um, I, I pause because even though I broke out of Oklahoma like a prison. Uh, it's, still, <laughs> it's still my heart. It, my home is there. So I'm, I'm trying not to talk too awful about them. Uh, <laughs> what I'll say is, and well, this is real. Uh, I, I perform literally all over the country and Tulsa, Tulsa audiences are not quite up to par yet um <laughs> but you know what that i feel like honestly it made me a better comic because i i started in tulsa so i started doing wednesday night open mic kind of things um and my home club out there it's the looney bin comedy club uh it's a chain of clubs run by jeff jones out of little rock and um there's some value in just doing awful in front of 12 people week after week after week to, to kind of build your chops. So I feel like if I had gone to a market um, where everybody was on board, I probably wouldn't have been as strong. Really? You think so? Absolutely. Well, yeah. I mean, here's an example. I, I did a West Coast tour one time. I started off in Vegas and I worked my way all the way up the coast. Uh, I did LA. Uh, actually, I did, I did um, the Ice House in Pasadena. And so Great I was, club. I love it. I love it. Um, I think, is it Jan? I think it was Jan that uh, was booking that. And, and so I started there, had a had great series of shows out there, worked my way up the coast. I ended up in um, Vancouver, British Columbia at the Comedy Mix. Great shows all along the way. And um, the very following weekend, I, uh, I was booked to, to headline a show in Oakland that no longer exists, um, which is Par for was the I, course. Every time I, I perform somewhere, they're like, <laughs> you know. Yeah, I was going to say, was it but, your fault? <laughs> right? Always, always, I'm certain. So I, I go I go back home, and I feel like it's going to be one of those stories of like, hey, check out the kid, the hometown kid, doing great. Um, and I I ate, I ate it the entire set. And so, um, and, I, and I, I'm not one to quickly blame the audience. I feel like we always have a responsibility, but you know what? Sometimes it's the fucking audience. So there you go. There you it, go. Yeah, it, it, you know what? I'm glad you brought this up because I produce shows for a number of years and you're absolutely correct. It's not, I don't totally blame the audience. I blame the producer because the producer did not set up the environment that was conducive for laughs, you know? 
Absolutely. The lighting wasn't good. The sound wasn't good. The people we weren't were, together. Yeah. yeah, They weren't sitting together. All those tiny little things make a huge difference in how the audience, audience reacts. And, and I, you know, I tend to not blame the audience because I, I, I've seen too many bad producers screw up a good audience. They could have been a good audience. You I know agree. what I mean? Absolutely. Sometimes, so, they're, sometimes they're force feeding comedy to people that came to get drunk, fight and get arrested. And right. you're just in the way. And well, that's an uphill battle. <laughs> I mean, they, they say the secret formula for a show is no longer than an hour and a half because people are going to just get tired. Um, I went up at like the two and a half hour marker. So the audience was tired oh, yeah. and yep. uh, they did not care about what I had to say. But anyway, I feel like I take value out of everything I do. So I feel like the, the, you, shitty, the shitty shows help us appreciate the good ones that much more. And no show's ever going to make or break me. So it's really no pressure. Yeah, but I'm never on a shitty show going, oh man, this is going to be make my next show great. <laughs> right, that's true. That's all, that's true. I'm never thinking that. Yeah. I'm like, it, how it, can I just finish this and get out of here? <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. I once did a show in Chickasha, Oklahoma at a bar. And there was literally an exit door with an exit sign on the stage. And I was like, man, I like that. Just in case. Just in case. <laughs> I'm going to break out of here. If the car started. I once climbed through the sound window. <laughs> in the middle of my set. <laughs> oh, wow. It was epic. Anyway, uh, listen, you, yeah, that's a, that's a whole nother story. It's just a long story. And this is about you right now. You recently worked on the movie infamous uh, with Bella Thorne that came out last year. Yeah. Um, now did you, that, it's not part of her only fans channel, right? No, no, that's a little we, something we have going on the side. We don't talk about it too much. Uh, but, uh, you can cash at me for all my good work on there. So, uh, no, I, <laughs> that, that movie. What was that like? Uh, turned out, well, so I, I play the role of a Texas state trooper. Um, and without giving anything away from it, but it's going to watch it. I just, I'm a Texas state trooper that happens to pull her over, uh, in part of the movie. And, um, what I will say is Bella Thorne as a person, uh, she was very kind, very caring, uh, very fun. We became instant best friends. Um, <laughs> it was a very hot day. I feel like I think it was in July in Oklahoma on some back road. And uh, she was driving this little piece of junk car that they needed to have for production. And they couldn't get it started for like a good 30 minutes. She rolls up and she has like a little personal fan that like you uh, that you'll just use for yourself. Hence personal. And uh, all right. I, I, I apologize. Internet to do a hot spot. What's that? And fix this. I, 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 I is it, have I been glitching or have you been glitching? I think it's been me, right? Everything is great, Danny. Because I think Everything I had an internet issue there. Yeah, I haven't noticed anybody glitching. Everything is great, JD. Please keep going. Okay. I mean, there are easier ways to like not talk about Bella Thorne. I'm, I'm down with not. So, no. <laughs> <laughs> She was great. She had her, her personal fan. And after our first rehearsal take, uh, she walked up to me and, and pointed the fan at me. And she's like, you just looked really hot. And I was like, well, thanks, Bella Thorne. Not so bad yourself. And then she laughed. And <laughs> we're having a good time. So um, it's a fun movie. It's a Bonnie and Clyde kind of thing. Um, and yeah, it was, uh, it was a lot of fun working with her. Very nice. Cool, What's cool, your cool. favorite? I'm nope. sure it was. <laughs> anyway, uh, so, um, so yeah, would you ever host a pay for play channel like that? <laughs> you know, I, I think, although I may still have some youthful looks, like I'm, I'm kind of, uh, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm 41 now, so I think, I think my, my ship has sailed. I mean, there's a demographic. <laughs> There's a market for everything, but I think uh, I, I think I would probably uh, not be able to pay my bills that way. So <laughs> you never know. That's true. I could so I could lower my expectations. I could I could live in the streets. 
Well, you could Absolutely. also you could appeal to a crowd that you don't actually like, but still do well. Oh, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> if we can get some sugar daddy men out there, no, I'm good. By the way, <laughs> off the market. Uh, yeah. uh, what about Blake Blake Shelton's brand new uh, video that you're in? Yeah, so I uh, I got to work with Blake Shelton. Uh, it was like the last week in December. Just a little random thing my agent in Oklahoma hooked me up with. Um, it's for his new song called Minimum Wage. And I remember uh, they're like, okay, this thing's going to debut. It's going to be a pretty big thing. And it did debut uh, on New Year's Eve with Carson Daly. And I was like, all right, check it out, everybody. JD is in the video. And there was a lot of backlash that happened. It was a big talk of the town uh, about how people were boycotting the song because you have a millionaire singing about minimum wage. And so uh, the video got pulled, the song got pulled, and I think there was a little bit of a situation where they're kind of like trying to decide what to do to move forward. And in all fairness, first of all, Blake, super cool, fun dude. Um, and we we got along great. Um, a lot of people don't know that he struggled a lot working his way up. So I think I think due What's, to his history, I don't he can think about that. Yeah, exactly. What's the issue? That's ridiculous. If he went through that when he, you know, he he he's experienced that. What's wrong with him singing that? I, I see, I, I I'm getting kind of tired of this whole everybody judging everybody for their, you know, art is art. You know what I mean? I agree. If people can relate, to, if people can relate to it, you know, you can't. They're getting mad at him for that. That's crazy to me. Yeah, um, you know, I feel like. We definitely live in a day and age where, as artists, it's a little, it's a little more difficult to uh, feel free to say and do whatever we want without being under a microscope. And you just have to understand that going in, that we're not going to appeal to everybody. And I think it's just best that we stay true to ourselves and and create our own art. Have you ever thought of doing a Barack Obama impression? Because your voice, I think, could really kill that. <laughs> <laughs> Well, being that I'm in Texas, uh, a Republican state, I just don't think it would kill out here. I just don't think. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you made fun of them, it would. Oh, that's true. <laughs> like, hey, it, like 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 a like a fight in a relationship. Like, let's bring some stuff up from like eight years ago. How does that sound? <laughs> Dude, yeah, they're still talking about it. Why not? <laughs> right. No, no kidding. Where's his birth certificate? You know. They have. Yeah. No <laughs> they have nightmares about it. Barack Obama. Why? They have nightmares. Um, I'm not. Oh, I'm not getting political. Oh my god! I can't believe I talked about politics. That is a did. that's a hard and fast rule. We we don't talk about politics. Um, yeah. I think we I'm a huge over Dennis. <laughs> I'm a huge Dennis Quaid fan. I'm a huge huge Dennis Quaid fan. Um, and there's an upcoming biopic, Reagan which I remember when Reagan was shot. I was a kid. I remember all that. Um, yeah. Without spoiling any, anything, can you tell us a bit about what you're doing in that? Um, absolutely. So so the movie, it's it's about uh, Ronald Reagan's life from being a child and, um, and through the presidency. And um, I play the role of uh, a continental. Um, and the continental's name is Rolo. And so... A, the Continentals were a quartet that uh, that Ronald Reagan put together in 1954 in Las Vegas, like old Vegas before it was like Rat Pack kind of stuff. And um, the idea was that his acting career was doing really awful. He's trying to figure something out. So this quartet was like stand up comedy. Uh, it was a lot of slapstick type of humor, like the seltzer bottles and like the, the horns and all that. And um, at any rate, uh, I play I play a continental named Rolo in that. Um, all right, I will share this little tidbit. Um, Exclusive to the Danny McDermott show. It really is. It really is. So, <laughs> what I'll say a couple of things about that experience that were kind of funny is uh, I was just hired on. I was a direct hire from the casting director. And like he literally called me on the phone while I was on my way to take care of things like, hey, if you can get to Oklahoma in the next few hours, do a COVID test. We'd love that so we can book you. And I was like, OK, headed that way. And 
it was just as a featured extra type of role. Uh, that's how, how it was described to me, essentially. And okay. I just, I don't know. I was the only one not treating Dennis weird, I guess. I don't want to say the only one. I don't want to say anything bad about anybody. I was just like, I treat, I don't think anybody is better than anybody. We're all people. So it's not a big deal. Right. And so we're just BSing around. He makes a reference in between rehearsal takes about Astral World. And I was like, did you make a, a reference to Astro World, Dennis? He's like, yeah, I used to I used to work there when I was uh, younger. And I was like, oh, I used to go there when I was a kid because we have a Houston connection. And so we start chatting it up. And I'm also in character, too, because it's 1954. And so, like, there's some Vegas-style women with, like, the feather things. I'm like, you see that woman over there? That's, that's Mary uh, Pfeffercorn. She uh, she uh, got pregnant out of wedlock the whole time about it. And, you know, and he laughed. And then so we, we kind of bonded there. And so with one of these scenes, we shot – three or four scenes together, he's like, I'm going to give you a line. He's like, I'm going to call you Rolo. And I'm going to, uh, I'm going to say, and, hmm, trying to be careful with everything I'm putting out there. He said, I'm going to call you Rolo and uh, I'll say something and you just say whatever you want. I was like, got it. Cool. Wow. And as much as I, and first of all, super sweet gesture. Um, and a great yeah. opportunity. Cause it's, it's SAG too, which is great because pay scale, like, is times 10 when that happened. Oh yeah, yeah. So at any rate, um, I'll, I'll tell you at least with the first take, how that went. He's like, he's like, okay, I'm gonna give you a line. I'm gonna say something, here you go. And so, um, and immediately the director's like, action. And the director doesn't know, the script supervisor doesn't know, nobody knows that Dennis told me this. So they're like, we're just gonna go along with it now. And so the first, the first take, um, Dennis is like, all right, Rolo, what do you have for me? And so in this scene, I, I have a pillow and a blanket and a rubber chicken. And the idea <laughs> was that I was going to say something funny or clever. Um, and I feel like historically, like I should be able to improv this, not a problem. This would be my opportunity. But instead, because it was like so quick, uh, Quaid's like, what do you have for me, Rolo? And I was like, I brought you this. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, yes, a pillow and a blanket. I was like, <laughs> so that's that's the story of me and, and that movie. It's going to be an awesome movie. It's a, it's a big blockbuster, and that's supposed to be related, or related uh, released, as I understand it, later this year. So. Well, well, you know what? We're going to be as generous as Dennis Quaid right now. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't give me a line. Right. Yes, no, we are. A we are going to blanket. <laughs> we are going to do a. S <laughs> but and make you know, it funny together too, which is crazy. Um, one of the guys on set, he's like, he was talking to me. He's like, hey, I think it'd be cool if we can get a picture with Dennis. I was like, well, how about after we're done shooting this scene, you can ask him or whatever. And we were setting up for the last scene, and he's like, hey, Dennis, do you think we could? take a picture after this is done. And Dennis is like, let's do it now. And meanwhile, the script supervisor is doing their thing. The, the uh, director is working with the cinematographer, like their work. We have like a hundred extras in the audience. And there's like four of us on stage. And yeah, out of uh, nowhere, Dennis just says, Hey, to, to the director, who's uh, uh, named Sean McNamara. He's like, Sean, uh, would you take a picture? And so Sean comes over and he's like, does anybody have a camera? I was like, yeah, I got a camera. So, I I hand my camera to the director. Director takes a, a shot of us. Uh, Dennis looks over my shoulder. He's like, he's like, I like. Do you mind if I send these to myself? I was like, yeah, sure, whatever. And so I have the <laughs> phone number now. So should we call him? Yeah. Yes, get him on the show right now. Right. <laughs> That's great. Quickest way to get blackballed in Oklahoma. <laughs> no, we're gonna do. We are gonna be as generous as Dennis for you because we're doing a segment with you tonight. And we don't always yeah. do that with every guest. All right. So we're going to do a segment. Failed inspiration. Quotes. Now, what this is, is there are uh, uh, quotes from famous, very famous people who have many great quotes, but sometimes their quotes aren't so great. Uh, sometimes they're the quotes that they were warming up to get the really good quote. And that's what this is about. So let's look at the first one. Sometimes when one door closes, it also smashes your fingers. Jimmy Carter. Yeah. I think that was done. Wait, wait, don't jump to the next one. <laughs> I, 
Who? How did that? Now, what is that? Is that from him? him I, I don't understand the comedy in this one, Kevin. Is this you? <laughs> yes, it is. Okay, explain it because. <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, well, there's an expression about when the door closes, another one opens. But sometimes when it closes, it also smashes your fingers. And Jimmy that Carter. Yes. And Jimmy Carter's not the kind of guy who let a couple of smash fingers keep him from work building a house the next day. Okay, okay there you go. <laughs> I, thought, I thought maybe it was his middle fingers, like once once <laughs> once once the hostages got released after Reagan took office. See, we're tying it back. Okay. That's right. There you go. You gotta work right, a jelly one. bean reference in. <laughs> the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The next best time was 19 years ago. Elon Musk. When did he say that? 19 years ago? <laughs> Maybe 20. <laughs> next one. <laughs> Let's keep going. <laughs> Watch your thoughts. So some of these can't be winners, but we're going to try. Watch your thoughts. They become words. Watch your words. They become actions. Watch your actions. They become alimony payments. Jeff Bezos, 39 million. Ouch. <laughs> Billion. Billion. You're right. Billion I, with a B. Yes. And I wrote that. I wrote that last <laughs> part. And I read it wrong. He gave <laughs> his his ex-wife got 39 billion in a settlement. That's wow. that's like she could buy earth. Deserves every nickel of it. <laughs> Meanwhile, like as a comic, like I'm excited when they give me like free food and a drink. So I guess there you go. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Jeff Bezos just gives her the craft table. Right, right. He's, he's like, he's on your way out of the house. Just take all the craft. <laughs> yeah, at Fort Knox. <laughs> I always travel with large pockets. <laughs> all right, next one. If you can dream it, stay in bed. It's an appropriate location for dreams. Mike Lindell, the My Pillow guy. <laughs> I hate giving him any quote. <laughs> to be honest with you. If I had known all I had to do to become famous was to be a, a crackhead pillow guy, I'll tell you. <laughs> I don't know. It's never right, next one. Start. Right? That's true. Kevin, you got some crack? <laughs> <laughs> I think Jay had a pillow earlier. You just met him at the wrong time. <laughs> if opportunity doesn't knock, robbing a liquor store in a nearby town can get you some cash to hold you over. Martha Stewart. <laughs> That's good advice. That's just rock solid good advice. You know what? Nobody knew what a rebel, what a what a like outlaw she was, man. If you're thirsty, you could grab a <laughs> bottle on the way out the door. It's just good advice. <laughs> All right, I next one. It would be gin and juice is what she would rob the store. Of, right? <laughs> is that what it is? Gin and juice. There you go. <laughs> That's it. Don't cry because it's over. Cry because you blew it. Kevin Spacey. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. That's that's, 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 that's a very, that's so many levels to that joke. <laughs> darkness cannot drive out the darkness. Only love can. Not that I would know. Stevie Wonder. That's, that's a blind joke. <laughs> he didn't see that one coming. So there you go. He did not. No, but he, he, did he not. probably heard it. <laughs> Those heightened senses. <laughs> Is that it? Is that all of them? That is. Let's bring Susanna on here. Susanna, come on. Come on the show. Hello. We, Susanna, thank you. I love you for that. For <laughs> last minute, she fixed some of the things because I didn't get to them till last night. Uh, so Susanna is the one who helps m make sure that this, this show runs smoothly. And I wanted to give her credit. Doesn't she look beautiful tonight? Doesn't thank she? You, thank you. Guys. The lovely Susanna. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Don't pause when I say something like that. Just say yes. <laughs> you gotta float away a little bit on your own, just for a second. It's just sitting I'm there. Contact HR. Watch out. <laughs> Bye, guys. Oh my God. Uh, so Jay, where can people find you? I'd prefer if they didn't. Really, um, I'm doing pretty well. <laughs> Staying under the radar. No. Um, my website is jdcomedy.com. Um, I have links on, to social media on there. So, uh, I mean, you never know. If you follow me on social media, you, you know, uh, you might know the next time I'm doing the Danny McDermott show. So, there you go. There you go. There you go. Bringing endorsement. We'll definitely have you back, bro. 
Thank you. And Thank you're you. actually Thank related you. to one of the writers on the show. Right. You're related to one of the writers on the show. So says yeah. Ancestry. Carrie, let's bring Carrie on. Very talented. <laughs> Carrie, where are you? Thing. Are you there? Okay. I'm there here. She is. Hi guys. Oh, hey. well, how did you guys how did you guys find out you were related? My sister. How did you guys find out? Huh? Well, my sister gave birth and that sort of is usually the way oh, that I thought, goes. Now wait. When I was talking to him earlier, I thought you said that, that it was like something you realized when you're older though. No? Oh yeah. You know what? So, well she, she my my sister is a little bit older than I am. And uh, she, um, we ba we found each other after a while, but we had known of each other. And uh, so long story short, she had some kids that were pretty awesome that uh, are really weirdly close to my age. So this is really creepy for me. <laughs> uh, very well, cool. She had two awesome well, children, one mediocre child. So we're, we're you know. <laughs> That's a still a high batting average. That's still a high batting average. <laughs> Two out of three ain't bad. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, I just wanted to bring you on and thank thank you as well, Carrie, for this show tonight. Uh, she wrote a lot of this material, and she's amazing. I wrote thank you so only much. The funny stuff. She's only very funny. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> only the funny stuff. That All is correct. That you, Danny. So I got nothing. That's why we blame the rest on Kevin. <laughs> it's accurate. All right, Jay. Thank you so much for being on the show. Uh, mm -hmm. We got to get uh, to our next guest coming up here. But, dude, you're welcome back anytime. You're a great guy, and it's really a pleasure to meet you. Thanks Good so time. Much. Pleasure, Jay. Good pleasure having me on. Thanks so much. All right, buddy. That was great. It was great. He's a good guy. All he right. Is. So we and did I'm, the film. Go ahead. I'm excited about the rest of the show, Danny. It started off great. I'm ready for more. All right, Kevin. Let's do this. This guy is crazy. I've known this guy for so long. <laughs> I met him on kar at karaoke. I met him at karaoke. Uh, he's been on, on the late show with James Corden, the tonight show with Jay Leno. America's got talent. Please welcome Perry Kurtz. Hey, up, buddy? see, I don't know you guys that well. I know Danny, but I don't know uh, Kevin. So let me, let me take my mask off. <laughs> Yeah, take that off, buddy. That's there creepy as hell. <laughs> see, Did you get a mask? You see, now that you can see you the rest a... of my face, you're saying put it back on. You made a mask no. of your own face? Of my own <laughs> face. And then when I go out, people that know me come up and go, wait, I know you. Women think this is cute. Little kids think I look like a monkey, and my daughter thinks it's stupid. But I go, hey, if women think it's cute, I'm happy. As long as they're laughing, that's all that matters. Long as they're left. <laughs> so you guys are wearing jackets. Well, at least Danny is. I thought I put my jacket on. If you can see this, it's, it's, kind a, of it's a cowboy vest. It's a cowboy vest. It's cowboy poetry night. <laughs> well, I could write a joke, but then I'd be broke. But I'm going to do this stuff and let's have a smoke. Let's get outside. We'll go for a ride and we'll do this and we'll wait for the tide. He's All the right. white Nipsey Russell. <laughs> You know, he got his name because he used to nip a lot. So it's good to be here, Danny. Good to see you again. Haven't seen you since you came back. Danny and I used to do a lot of karaoke together. Yes, and, we did. Uh, and it's amazing. He would sing and they would actually let him come back. <laughs> that wouldn't I happen can if sing. I sang. And you, yeah, you, know, you would do the freestyle rap. I am the uh, the narrative freestyle rapper that uh, gets all the attention from the young girls. It's terrible, Kev. When I sing and I sing about them, women get up and they twerk on me. They rub on me. They back <laughs> up on me. It's so embarrassing. Well, for it's them, no it joke. Is. I've no, seen the videos. I've seen horrible. the videos. These it's young, hot, beautiful women twerk on him, rub against him, dance on it. It's crazy. He's like he's like a legend. It's crazy. He's a yep. karaoke legend. Sometimes and, they make and, it, they make it very hard for me. Yeah. They, what? Okay. It's, it's a family show. That's a pun, David. <laughs> it's a pun. See the way I slipped that in there? I, I caught that. Danny, you you didn't even feel that one. That's what she said. Anyway. Yeah. Um, hey. <laughs> uh, so how did you be now? How did you become friends with Robin Williams? 
Well, when I moved to say, I started doing comedy in Philadelphia in 74 when I quit my day job where I was an art director at a religious publishing house. And I had saved up a lot of money. I had about $65,000 in the bank. And in 74, that's about- That was a lot of money. Grand. Yeah. I yeah. was living- really well. I had six cars in a seven bedroom apartment with five bathrooms. And I started doing comedy there. And I started going up to New York. And I remember I met a guy named Jerry Seinfeld, who I had heard of that was headlining clubs, but he wasn't on TV yet. He wasn't a big superstar. And we're standing in the lobby of, I think it was uh, Caroline's or one of those clubs. And we're talking. He goes, uh, so you're from Philly? Yeah, I'm, I'm a New Yorker. And we're talking. All of a sudden, they go, Kurtz, you're up. I run up on stage. I do my eight minutes. I come running off. And as we go by, he hits my hand, one of these. Hey, hang out. And he goes up and does his set. He comes back after he does his show. And we're standing, this gorgeous little blonde comes up and says, you're really cute. I want to go out with you. And she grabs a napkin and writes her phone number on it and gives it to him. And she goes, call me. And she goes, and he goes, what do I do with this? I said, you call her and you'll probably sleep with her. He says, you really think so? I said, she gave you her number. What do you think that means? She wants her car towed? Well, show <laughs> ends. The show ends. She comes out. She's being towed behind this giant guy bigger than Shaq. He must have been seven feet tall. And he's so big, her arm is all the way up in the air. And as she goes by Jerry, she goes. And this uh. is typical, <laughs> typical Seinfeld. He looks at me and he goes, I can't fill those shoes. <laughs> so awesome. i did it there for a while and then i heard that san francisco was where it was happening i moved out there in 79 i met robin williams i was hosting a show every tuesday and thursday and we became good buddies uh you know we would we would go outside and we would talk a lot and um <laughs> we became good friends and he would come in every Tuesday and Thursday and we would open the show with about 35 to 40 minutes of improv together. I've always been improvisational. I became a comedian because I'm always on the edge. I just say what I think and it comes out and people find it funny. And so we started doing a lot of improv. Which and, people? Uh, Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, the, the, the really <laughs> ones, the high the ones that were really, really high. And, uh, <laughs> Even up until I guess it was probably 2014 when he really went into the depression, even when he was down here in L.A., I, he would welcome me to his shows. If he was doing big shows, I was doing 30 to 40 minutes with him. We did one at the Cow Palace for I think it was 18,000 people. And they gave wow. us 200, 200 foot cords and we both went up into the audience and we were yelling, working off each other. Who are you? I'm over here. What are you talking about? And we would just go into all these characters. But do you guys remember a band called War? War. What is it good for? Well, yeah. they were playing at San Francisco. When I started doing this improv music, I was very popular with the bands because they like jamming they don't have to do for so i was invited to sit in with them uh, jefferson starship great white the tubes and war was playing and i knew one of them and they invited me to get up with them so i get up with them and i'm i'm i remember i was singing about this before i was rapping i was singing about being the white guy playing to the all-white audience with an all-black band and I was making jokes about him. People are waving their hands and they're doing things for me to sing about. Robin walks in. They also go, Robin, he gets up and he keeps receipt, repeating the same line. Here I am. I'm up with war. Here I am. I'm up with war. I'm with war. I'm with war. I'm with war. And they booed him off the stage. But what? I knew him. Yeah, because he wasn't he wasn't really doing anything. He was just repeating. But him and I were very very close. I gave him rides home. Uh, he wasn't allowed to drive because he couldn't stand to be by himself. And I was giving him rides home on the Prairie cycle, my motorcycle. And when he died, about six hours after he died, his wife called me and we talked about what really happened. And um, she calls me on his birthday and his anniversary and we talk. And uh, he was he was really depressed. He was sick. He had Parkinson's really bad. And yeah. the doctor gave him gave him two to six weeks to live and the next morning he said fuck it he was running out of money he was down to like a million and a quarter and that sounds like a lot to us but he had invested in his last show uh the crazy ones he put five million into that and it went in the toilet but his wife said but we're okay he left 25 million dollars in insurance 
So that paid the uh, rent on three house mortgages on three houses and all his alimony and took care of his kids. But yeah, wow. we were, and then right here, Dana Carvey, good friends with him. Whenever he plays at clubs, he calls me and we go down, we write together. They call me the tag king. I'm, I'm good at tags. I can't write a joke to save my life, but I can <laughs> tag a joke. <laughs> well, you know, Chris, Christopher Titus told me a story. Uh, about you, him, and Ellen DeGeneres on a road trip. <laughs> he told me, he basically like, he's like, oh yeah, you know Perry? I know Perry. Yeah, Perry. I, I he, We did a road trip with uh, Ellen DeGeneres and she was driving by the end of the, end, end of the drive, she wanted to kill him. <laughs> yeah, here's a story about her. We did, uh, we did two weeks in Reno. And I was featuring, this was probably in 84. I didn't start headlining until 86. Uh, I quit the strip club. When I first got up there, I, my first job was as a male stripper. I was the manager and the MC and a dancer. And I quit that in 83. I can't hold a straight face when you say that. I can't, I can't hold a straight face. I can't. No, please don't. Please don't. Stop. Well, uh, Suzanne, uh, get, uh, him, get him out of here. <laughs> Just imagine this little goofy guy. See, I was the MC, and the women would ask me to strip. And I would go, okay, but you're going to laugh. And they did. And I made a lot of money. Uh, the club was owned by the mafia. I was getting paid $3,000 a week. Plus, they wow. were supplying, supplying me with an ounce of cocaine every week, pure pharmaceutical cocaine. And then in 83 or 84, AIDS got a name. Before that, it was called the monkey disease. And we were having so much sex at the club. When it had a name, I said, I'm quitting. I'm going on the road. And I've been wearing condoms ever since. In fact, I got one on right now. That's just a good <laughs> idea. Well, it's neat because when I walk, it slides up and down, and it feels like I'm never alone. Okay, okay. So okay. I was working with Ellen DeGeneres, <laughs> working with her, and she had not come out yet. The comics knew. That she was right. lesbian, but it wasn't natural for the world to know. She uh, she had done her Tonight Show thing where she made the call with God and all. And we're sitting there after show, and I had to be really clean with her, spotlessly clean. And after the show, we're sitting there in the lobby, and we're looking at these women go by. And I see this tall blonde with long blonde hair and a lot of teeth. She likes women with a lot of teeth where you can see the gums. And I went, she's hot. And I went, yes, yeah, she is really hot. She was, well, stop looking at her. I get her first. I'm the fucking headliner. <laughs> the power of close in the show. But um, her, I, I, I mean, doesn't I the woman have a choice? <laughs> yeah, well, you know. <laughs> not, not Ellen was headlining. Right. Ellen was headlining. She'd been on the Tonight Show. She was the star. I was the nobody. But she was nice. Uh, she was all right. She was a little uh, uh, little tough with the technical crew. Her sound had to be perfect. And she would do like 40 minutes of a sound check before the show to make sure it was perfect. She wanted every one of her shows to be absolutely right on the money. And then, well, you know, uh, I, I, I got to respect that because I'll tell you, I was just talking to J, uh, Jay about this. Uh, if the sound people think that sound only matters with music, it matters with stand up. Oh, yeah. It, it's if, 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 if the high end isn't high enough, it's if it doesn't sound crisp, if, if it's low and it's, it, it sounds a tiny, even a tiny bit muffled, it's like half the reaction from the audience. So I, right. I respect that. Well, I have a sound effect that I do in my act that I got from doing uh, nitrous oxide. You guys remember laughing gas? Oh, yeah. Whippets, sure. whippets. We, I used to get tanks of that up in San Francisco. And from doing it, I learned this sound. Well, if I do that on the microphone, it gives you the highs, the sizzle sound, and it gives you the drum sounds. And that's what you need with the voice. The voice is like multiple instruments. That's why it's so hard to get a really good vocal microphone. And so right. I, uh, I would do that before the shows. But the people I've gotten to work with, I mean, I have worked with everybody. I worked with Titus for a week up in San Luis Obispo. He was pissed off because I was getting all the chicks because I was funny and I could dance and I was cute. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's, then, let's uh, not badmouth other comedians. 
<laughs> no, I'm not bad mouthing him. I'm not. He he's hysterical. He killed every show. But afterwards, when we would go to the other bars, I would go out looking for bands I could sit in with. And then in '83, for about eight months, I was having dinner with Bill Cosby because I ran a major club on Broadway. And through Bill, and then you woke up the next morning. Well, <laughs> no, his, uh, his- <laughs> I know what they say about Bill. I one time I did fall asleep at dinner. And I woke up and there was a cigar in my mouth. Well, I think it was a cigar, but I fell right back to sleep. But he was very short with the service people. And he called all the women, honey, sweetheart, baby doll. It was all very, very sexual stuff. Very, hurry up, get my food over here. This is, I don't like this, it's too much salt. But through him, I met Rodney Dangerfield who was flying me out to Dangerfields in New York three times a year. And he would tell me, don't bring any money. He paid for everything. And wow. uh, the next year I met Milton Burrell, who became my mentor, who taught me about how to write from your heart and write about your life. And so I don't write jokes. I just tell real stories about what happened to me. You know, did like you I have, was, did you give us, did you give us any clips to play or no? Uh, I was not asked for any, no. Well, I did kind of say that in the, if you check the text, <laughs> I did give you that option if you wanted to play clips, but I, I would, do you, you, have, do you have a my, clip? You can- <laughs> is there a way you want me to pull one up and share it? I can do that. I can put share it. Yeah, it yeah. Put it in the private chat, put it in the private chat for Susanna. I, I'd love to, to, to have one of those clips of you at karaoke doing the rap with the girls all over you. I know you got a bunch of those videos. You tell oh. me. So he, yeah, put that in the private chat so Susanna can share it. It's going to take a long time to upload that, though. That's the no, problem. No, you don't need to upload. You got to you got to uh, link links on YouTube, don't you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll send you the link. All right. Let me. Yeah. Uh, just yeah. Uh, just send a link from a short on. one. Wait. It's let me look. Really at, <laughs> let me see what I can find. Give me a second. <laughs> I'm looking. What's that? Oh, that's my weenie. All right. That's uh, you don't. Oh, oh where'd he go? Happened? He's gone. He, he saw his off. weenie. Of course he's gone. <laughs> I have a video. Let's watch the video until he comes back, okay? Okay, let's do it. Okay. I hope the video is not of his weenie, Danny. I know, me too. I'm terrified. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, this is... Okay. I don't know why I'm the main guy on this right now. Can we make that full size and me small? There we go. <laughs> All right. I'll dance if I need to. Actually trying to call to... me on Facebook. Fast oh, you forward found to one. the chicks. Yeah, fast forward it to where the girls are, are, are. This is, you guys, the reason I'm doing this right now is because it's just so hysterical. These girls all over them. Is that one of the ones? No. All right. The, you, there's you so many them. of them. Let me uh, find uh, the uh, James Corden one because that one is my, that's my favorite. The first time I met this guy, I I, uh, I met Perry. I was um, I love karaoke. I kill it at karaoke. I enjoy oh. it. That's that's how I meet people. And um, uh, I was in there, and Perry comes in. I never met him before. I never saw him before in my life. I think it was the Oaks Tavern. He comes in, and uh, he's just this, he's, well, look at him. He's, he's this little guy <laughs> with the glasses and everything. And he walks up to the stage and he, it, well, there's no stage, but he walks up to the, where there's lights and, and he goes, to, he goes to, and he does this rap and the, everybody knew him. Everybody knew him. All yeah. these young, beautiful women, uh, the whole house was rocking. Everybody was cheering. The girls went up there. Yeah. You know, what's so, funny uh, though. You, you, when you do the whole bit, you you pretend to get your tongue stuck. Right, I act like the, my tongue stuck. Keys. I go, oh oh, 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 that's real funny. My tongue's bleeding, and the crowd, oh, that's so <laughs> funny. They're laughing until you say bleeding, and then they're like, ew. Oh. But uh, you can see the response that gets from women. Women really appreciate my appreciate my uh, dexterity. Is that the right word for that's something the, like that? That's the right word. That my dexterity, <laughs> and uh, they want you to I, they want you to play a tune. Well, for the past 16 years, I've been playing at senior centers because it pays a lot better in comedy clubs. And I did that at one. And there was a lady who was 98 years old. She yells, you're my ride home. (laughs) 
I'm um, sure you will. I also, <laughs> I, I also love your your music video. Oh, the your, beer and your, cigarettes. Yes. You want me to post that um, one for her? Yeah. All right. That's another. That one. How, how many? This one. How many? Only. Two point three. Two point three million views. Two point three nice. million views. Nice. Yep, and it's just me rapping and walking and singing about drinking beer and smoking cigarettes. And I don't do either, but they got me at a table with a bunch of women, and I have people come up to me all the time. And, Danny, you've probably seen this happen. They come up and they go, you're the beer and cigarettes guy. And it's so weird that when they say that, I go, yeah, why? You know, why do you like that? It's bizarre. So it's there. If she can pull that up and run that, that'll uh, destroy the energy of the show. <laughs> <laughs> so an adm admirable goal to have. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Here we go. Hold on. It's party time. I like drinking beer. I can't and see it. I do. I can see it. Is, yes. I like drinking beer and smoking cigarettes. And when it comes to getting down, I am the best. I don't have any rules. Not even one. The only rule I have is have fun. I smoke a hundred cigarettes and drink a thousand beers. And not just in one day. Imagine in one year. Most people have boring lives with families and jobs. My family is this jacket and my job is to rock. I'm drunk all the time, even during the day. My parents say, get a job. I say, it's no way. Cause I like drinking beer and smoking cigarettes. Do I like the party? The answer is yes. I like drinking beer and smoking cigarettes. Party is my favorite word. It is the best. I dropped out of school when I was just 14. Cause there wasn't a course on how to party. So I started smoking cigarettes with my mouth and fingering girls on my parents' couch. My parents said, you can't bring your girls <laughs> in here. Hello. No more smoking cigarettes and drinking. Can I call you back 20 minutes? So I said, yes, man. And I got up and left. And I've been smoking and drinking and fingering ever since. That's right, drinking beer and smoking cigarettes. Do I like to party? The answer is yes. I like drinking beer and smoking cigarettes. My motto is always live your life on the edge. And watch the background. This is my daughter. Are you drunk right now? <laughs> hey, everybody, are you smoking cigarettes? Again, this guy really sucks. Hey, everybody, are you having a good time? Oh, Jesus fucking Christ. Hey, anybody. <laughs> Ew. Drinking beer and smoking cigarettes. Do I like to party? The answer is yes, I like drinking beer and smoking cigarettes. Your parents don't like me because I am a threat. <laughs> and that was it. So, uh, oh sorry, I God. was talking. My daughter called. That little girl was uh, my daughter, who's now 16. My uh, ex wife and my daughter are living in a hotel. Uh, down in Studio City, costing me six hundred and eight dollars a week. So uh, I'm doing Venmos. If anybody has any extra money, Venmo Perry Kurtz. But yes, yeah, she wants we'll to hang out to me. We'll put the link right. uh, on uh, after the show. So yeah, because you got uh, you Perry must have at least a thousand listeners right now. No, uh, yeah, at least. <laughs> and after that, <laughs> after that, seven. Where can people find you? They can find me, Google Perry Kurtz. My uh, main page is, that's it, perrykurtz.com. The Perry Talks is I'm uh, splitting off into public speaking and motivation and teaching people how to be funny in their regular life, how to use humor and get along and diffuse anger by being funny. Somebody walks in and they're upset and you go, hey, I was going to wear that black shirt, Kevin. I can't believe you're wearing that. Uh, and they laugh. 
So uh, that's it. I've got three websites. I'm everywhere. I'm doing a million things. And on February 5th, I will be 70 years old. And let me look at this. Look, this is all real. And there's no bald spots. I got all my fucking hair. All right. Listen, we're going to do <sighs> one segment with you. We're going to do a segment with you before we do. Guys, we still got Ask Anthony coming up. We're going to do a quick segment uh, with Perry because you've been such a great guest. Uh, and let's roll. Stuff that looks like other stuff. Okay, so while we were surfing the internet, we came across a few things that really looked familiar in a strange way. Uh, let's show you what, what, what we mean here. Let's start with this picture. Okay, here is Rihanna in her 2015 Met Gala dress. Huh, Kevin, what do you think? Pretty elaborate outfit, but it does look really familiar. Well, it's brightly colored, it's flowing. You know, I think I have seen it before. If I really concentrate, I can feel it bubbling up from deep inside. It's fake vomit. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's the deja puke. I knew I'd seen that dress somewhere. There it is. I right? thought it was it some sort like of it? weird. <laughs> I thought it was some sort of transparent, weird cut of meat. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Look at it. But it that's looks like, it kind of looks like. The bottom looks like an omelet, omelet, to tell you the truth. <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> well, Danny, Danny knows all about style. Ask him. Yeah, right? Okay, let's go to the next one uh, before we get into that. Okay, so, so weird, right? Uh, okay. Uh, this is definitely pretty cool. Kevin? I don't know. What he, do looks a little like my, he looks a little like my aunt with less facial hair. Yeah, it looks like Amir Khalil, a comic I know. <laughs> well, he doesn't look, look at he, doesn't, he doesn't look like Isn't he beats more his than women. A couple, two or three scars. Well, yeah. Well, let's not get into that. For COVID before, <laughs> uh, before, before it was cool or necessary. Yeah. It reminds me of something. <laughs> it reminds me of something I've seen before. Let's check it out. Steven Tyler's mic stand. He looks just like it. Right. Huh. Yep. Yeah, most people go to a concert that idolize the lead singer. Johnny Depp went to the concert. It was Aerosmith that when he went home was that mic stand. Yes. 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 <laughs> That's right. He wasn't as hard, though. <laughs> I can only imagine the sordid stories those scarves could tell if they could talk. We gotta get Danny a better connection. <laughs> black, I think black light to, could tell those stories pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> so who do you think uh, stand longer, Johnny Depp or the stand? I gotta go with the mic stand. Only because it could stand up for a longer period of time, which might be unfair because it is professional. And it's adjustable. Stand. Yeah, because you, you don't want it to be too big. Trust me, that, I've that's been through that before. <laughs> I'll tell you when it's a Yeah, I believe joke. that. Anyway. All right, God, so I, I thought he'd never leave. Uh, apparently, it's just you and I, Perry. It's about time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, and I thought that was going to be Danny back, but I see here uh, we've got. Oh, man. You know, my connection. He's trying. Oh, he's back. He's trying. Kill your Wi Fi, Danny. Turn off your Wi Fi on your phone. It's dragging your power out. Well, so, that's so who is that? That is Danny, but I think he's frozen. That's Nicki Minaj in the picture. Oh, oh Perry. I could swear I've seen that ha that haircut somewhere before. Oh, yes, absolutely. I've seen it before for sure. I think I have that myself. There you go. Oh, only I. It's, it's treatable. <laughs> I've seen it at <laughs> Safeway or Shoprite. Yeah, that's where I saw it. <laughs> it's look at it. It is. It's the uh, 
cruciferous vegetable section. <laughs> right. That's where it came from. It's is cauliflower is, is cauliflower uh albino broccoli? <laughs> <laughs> it's privileged broccoli. Depends on how you're eating it. All right, let's see them both together. See? Exactly the it's, same. It's they're twins. If 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 Nikki sees this, she's gonna kick our asses. You realize that, Kevin. <laughs> yeah, but you'd like the attention. <laughs> if, if only she, did, if only she had some ranch dressing, she could make it dip, make it dip. <laughs> yeah, she's feeling the super burst in the supermarket. It's explosive. <laughs> <laughs> All right, our next example uh, of the universe repeating itself. Look at that cat. That is one schnazzy cat. <laughs> That is a nice <laughs> pussy. Isn't it imp isn't that impressive, Kevin? <laughs> I could swear I've seen that face before somewhere. That is a I'll special a brand. I'll give you a hint. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> that's not a hint, actually. That's actually what it is. <laughs> you know, Barbara Streisand's looking good. Yeah, she's well, 104. Wow, it, 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 right? That's uncanny. Let's see if we get. I grew up listening to her, and since to her, I've always liked women with big noses. And then my dad says, you know why you like big noses? I said, why? He says, because they're good for nuzzling nuts. Ooh, okay. <laughs> it took me a year right. to figure out what that meant. Nature is funny, and, and sometimes it's cruel. I do hear the cat's gorgeous in person. <laughs> Only one of them can lick their own butt, though, so. <laughs> you remember that old joke where a guy walks over to his friend's house and the dog's laying on his back and it's laying on his back and he's the dog's licking his balls and the guy says, "Man, I wish I could do that." And the guy says, "Well, if you pet him, he might let you." Oh! <laughs> All right, let's go to the next one. <laughs> Quick, Post Malone's outfit. Oh God, well, that, that's very something. You That's know, it was driving me crazy. I knew I'd seen those pants somewhere before. I, I think he shops the same place as Rihanna. <laughs> nope, nope. Wow. You got to go a little bit further back to a classic film about a famous candy maker. I think you'll spot it right away. There you go. The lickable <laughs> wallpaper from Willy Wonka. Yeah. Why are we doing this joke? Doesn't he already get late enough already? Well, there isn't a cherry <laughs> in the bunch. Uh, that's, well, you know, it's style, right? <laughs> he, he tries to be different from everybody else. And look at that son of a bitch. He's different. He's, he's different get, for sure, man. He's got to get that tumor removed from the back of his head, though. Ew. Oh, the, oh, the man bun. Oh, is that what that is? <laughs> Don't start me on tumors. I got one of my own. What, what do you think, Kevin? You want to lick his pants? <laughs> I uh, no thank you, but I bet you the the strawberries on the wallpaper taste like strawberries. Oh, I'm sure the snozberries taste like snozberries. Uh, let's not talk about his berries. You just ruined Willy Wonka for me, Kevin. Thank you. <laughs> Take some bath salts; it'll help you. I don't know what that means, right, Danny. I don't. I don't either. <laughs> let's go to though. the next one. <laughs> Look at that. Do you believe that's Justin Timberlake, dude? Do you believe I that? that wow. Hair. I do. I remember that hair. I don't I don't know if I'd say I remember it fondly, but uh I do remember it. <laughs> yeah, but remember he had his hair and still this hair. He had this hair and still got to have sex regularly with Britney Spears when she was at her hottest. Oh, like who it, did like <laughs> Life is essentially a kick in the nuts, Danny. <laughs> it reminds me of something else, though, his hair, that's cheap and is loved by people with little or no taste. <laughs> Cup of noodles. <laughs> I thought you were going to say Britney Spears again. Same thing. <laughs> same, same intellect level. You know, Danny, that's, what she, that's what she's down to right now. <laughs> Danny, you could get that haircut. All you have to do is go to the barber and say, I want the cup of noodles. You'll know exactly what you mean, and you'll walk out. And you'll look just like that. Look at them. Look at them together. They really look. They really look exactly the same. <laughs> it's wonderful. I wonder if he just pours hot water on his hair. 
<laughs> you think I'll get chicks with that hair, Kevin, if I did that? No, but you you will get heart, heart palpitations from, from all that MSG and sodium. That's you can't <laughs> argue with you can't argue with his success, though. No, no, D dude. I would believe me if I met him, I'd be kissing his ass and apologizing for this whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> He's a he talented start, kid. He yeah. probably let you. Yeah, Danny would start with the ass. <laughs> <laughs> now that all we, our adrenaline is uh, rushing, let's bring in our guests again and let's do Ask Anthony. Love. What should I watch if there's a natural disaster? All right. You should probably Anthony. watch weather alerts. The end. Have a good night. <laughs> watch your ass. Yeah. So check it out, gentlemen. Good to see you all. Nice to see you, JD. I lived in Plano, Texas for about five years in the uh, early 2000s. So, oh, wow. So, so you broke out of the, uh, the heroin pandemic out here, huh? I actually jumped into, I, I left LA <laughs> and I went through the pandemic, which was uh, Plano, Texas and Willow Bend. And oh, wow. uh, yeah, and uh, everyone's like, why are you moving to where like MTV put on the map? I'm like, well, I guess that's where it's at. But uh, jokes aside, um, that was obviously a very sad situation, but I really yeah. have a lot of good memories of Plano. That's what I tell my realtor. I need two bedrooms and at least two major narcotic episodes within the building. What do you got for me? I love it. Hey, dude, I got to tell you, Kevin, man, when uh, Danny had those technical difficulties, you literally lifted up the show. So nicely done. Nicely done. <laughs> Thank you. Don't tell, don't tell Danny. He hates to hear that. Yeah, he was, there to, to hear that. <laughs> he was there to fill the vacancy when Danny was there. Uh, he did a hell of a job. I see you're still in Hawaii. That's good. Very cool. Oh, yeah. Envious. Envious. Uh, yeah. So I got to tell you what's wrong? What do you, How come you have no lights in your in your place right now? Uh, do you not see these lights right there? Wow. All right. I'm All right. giving it a little bit more Danny. low key, saving some uh, you, electricity, sir. Oh, are you in the adult section? Uh, <laughs> no, maybe that's the next episode. Because that's where the neon is usually. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, I should not say, I well, of course, of course. Um, but yes, in terms of what movies to watch during a natural disaster, uh, as you can see, uh, last Tuesday, we had a tornado warning after 2 a.m. in North Atlanta. Wow. Okay? It's a little early in terms of a season for us to be experiencing that. So I was up until about 4.30 in the morning. Just I'm a huge weather fan. I mean, I got a Skywarn Storm Spider hat. So, and yeah, that's the uh, that's when the shit was hitting the fan. Uh, thankfully, we did not have a tornado in our hood. Everything was cool. But it led me to my next segment, which is... If you're going to be watching anything during a natural disaster, if you survive, <laughs> yes, that's our list for the night. However, I don't want to. I don't want this to go unnoticed. The '70s gems of yesteryear, right? Oh yeah, right. right? You got to watch those. But we're going to be starting with naturally. Naturally. Let's remove that, Susanna, if you don't mind. God bless. Here we go. Jeez, Twister. my camera's all over the map. You got to start with Twister, right? Fucking yeah. hell of a movie. It actually uh, really kicked off the disaster series of the 90s. And again, no disrespect to the 70s because that's really where it kicked off. But everything's so cyclical. Um, and the director of Twister banged out Speed uh, like two years before. But uh, do you guys remember when those movies came out? Did you catch them in the theater? What was going on in your I life? Was, at the time? I, was, I, I wasn't born yet. <laughs> ah, okay. So then your Britney Spears comment is okay now. The one, yeah, that's good. Because you were you were super young. Yeah. We, we don't talk about my age on the show, Anthony. How many times have I told you? <laughs> it's it's a law. <laughs> Forgive me. I didn't know that you were uh, you were uh, uh, swaddling baby when Speed came out in '94. <laughs> yeah. I lived in a big city. You could get cocaine. There was no need for Speed. God bless. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're killing it tonight. You're killing it tonight. Very good. So, Keep so speed. On. That was that was when Sandra Bullock. That's that's when everybody fell in love with her, man. 
Uh, yes. She was um, so hot in that. Oh, movie. she carried the movie. I mean, don't get me wrong. Oh, I am an FBI agent. I mean, he did pretty good too. But, <laughs> but uh, you know, it, it, it's technically a vehicular disaster movie. Um, yeah. Uh, there's nothing natural about this movie, so I'll, I'll be the first to admit that. But it's literally and lumped Dennis, into that. And Dennis Hopper. Dennis oh, Hopper. Yeah. God bless him. Yes, absolutely. Um, shortly after that, it became a uh, battle of pairs. You had Dante's Peak, followed by, shortly after, oh, Volcano, right? So every, Hollywood was trying yeah. to double down on everything that was coming out that was popular. Uh, whatever the formula was, disaster-wise, uh, if didn't pressed, both movies, didn't didn't both of those movies suck? <laughs> <laughs> Probably, but actually, I enjoy them. Um, uh, a real uh, volcano could destroy you very slowly. Yes, like, hey, you you better get out of the way. This, but if it hits a gonna... densely populated area like Los Angeles out of the La Brea Tar Pit, it's <laughs> kind of fucked. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. That's, uh, yeah. Well, if it's a volcano versus Tom Hanks, there you go. You know what? God bless. You know what? I should have totally thrown Joe, Joe versus, versus the volcano. volcano. In the mix. It's right. Yes. That's a good reference. It's right there in the list yes. somewhere. Yeah. Nicely. Uh, nicely. Spoiler sensitive. alert. Um, it's the volcano. <laughs> no, but the uh, Dante's Peak is where I learned about the Paraclastic Cloud. Like it was an educational film starring uh, a pre-James Bond and post Mrs. Doubtfire. Um, but it's actually uh, pretty cheesily enjoyable. The uh, effects from Digital Domain, which was like the powerhouse of VFX companies, totally still holds up, I gotta say. Linda Hamilton's really? badass. Yeah, I think so. I mean, everything's subjective, wow. of course. I mean, I got VHS behind me, so don't necessarily take my word for it. But uh, <laughs> uh, And then as cheesy as Volcano is, it's, it kind of works, you know? It's, it's Especially when the grandma, like, loses half her body trying to save the family. It's kind of like, it's kind of a popcorn comedy. God bless grandma. Um... But as I said, moving forward, <laughs> pears. Try that again. Shit. Shit. <laughs> shit. Fuck these cameras. Deep Impact Armageddon. Okay. Deep Impact Armageddon. Everything was doubling down, dude. And uh, I got to say. Yeah, this came out. Didn't it? That had to be a, a screw up. I remember when those came, came out and they were the exact same movie. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, it wasn't an accident. Yeah. In fact, uh, oddly enough, there's a uh, documentary called Tales from the Script that talks about like super successful working screenwriters. And they talk about how an idea was leaked and how I, an idea came to be quickly before wow. Armageddon came out. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's hearsay, if you will, or just somebody's account of it. But I wouldn't be surprised because, I mean, everything really kind of duplicates itself if the formula works. Um, yeah, and Hollywood always tries to be like, you know, where the puck is going to be, not where the puck is. They always trying to, they always want to predict where the next trend is going to be. Um, Let, wait, let's vote on which one of those was better. Hold them up wait. again. <laughs> <laughs> I got left to left quick. No, nah, Deep Impact was better. I think that's left tool. What do you? Oh, you said okay. There you go. Uh, does everybody agree with that or no? I don't. I will say Deep Impact is more of a real movie. No. Is there a yeah, glitch in the said, Matrix? <laughs> apparently. <laughs> I always thought that was porn. Oh, dude, you would there, love my adult section. A, there's a porn version of Deep Impact somewhere. Trust me. You know, I should really, for Mr. Perry Kurtz, I should show him the adults only section beyond those doors right there. But I don't want to get off topic. I'm in there. <laughs> you are. I, I have a couple of videos in there. It's all keyboard related. Uh, yes. I you with a guy with the mop. Yeah. Uh, okay, I so am, Deep Impact my or videos Armageddon? Are short. Which one? Well, who, who has top billing in Deep Impact? Uh, either Morgan Freeman as the president or Tia Leone or Elijah Wood or, I mean, I'm, I'm literally remembering from 98 whenever it came out. Gotcha. So. Yeah. I guess they all shared it because it was like 17 stories kind of going on at once. And then they all got killed. Kind of spoiler alert. I had to, <laughs> but, uh, anyway, I just, I'm not going to watch it now. Yeah. 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 No, it's just like, it's so funny. Like when I talk to some friends and, or vice versa, and they, they spoil the ending of a movie that's like 40 years old. And I'm like, God damn it. They're like, dude, you had 40 years <laughs> to watch it. I'm like, fair enough. Titanic okay. sunk really in the end. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. 
<laughs> but uh, Danny, what's happening beyond you? Are you uh, in ET's kitchen? What's going on? Oh no, no, this is John Lennon's uh, old house mansion. So this, this I is knew. actually stained glass uh, to to the sky. It's stained glass, so during the day, it's amazing. Very cool. How so, is the uh, I, mansion of dead rockers treating you? God, God it's rest awesome. Soul. <laughs> John yeah. Lennon's internet sucks, Gary said. <laughs> that's why. That's why I moved yeah. closer to the router. <laughs> Not, uh, better late Good than move. never, I guess. Yes. I, know, I mean, it's not better than uh, uh, Yakety Yaks Hawaii location, but you know, it's pretty cool. John Lennon's <laughs> house. Well, you know, Shows you, know. you Danny will even sleep with dead people. <laughs> even in his oh, young age. Right. Uh, I, I will say, though, just to throw this down, finish it out. Deep Impact is more of a real movie, as cheesy as it is. This is a glorified music video that really tries hard. It's cheesy. It's fun. It's bad. <laughs> yeah. But <laughs> yeah. I got more. Sorry, guys. I got more. Let's do it. Uh, I'm not going to um, really throw this in because that's our July 4th one. So I'll just put it on the wayside. I will, though, quickly end with Christian Slater and Morgan Freeman's Hard Rain, also known as Hard The Flood. Rain. Yes, they retitled it. It's actually known as The Flood like in different territories. But in the U.S., they, they were like, we can't be the tail end of this disaster craze. We've got to like mix it up and let them know it's a thriller. So we'll just call it hard rain, which is kind of the same thing, but like not. Anyway, uh, apparently like 400 people got electrocuted on the set because the whole set is literally flooded. So is it a good movie? No. <laughs> is it enjoyable? Kind of. Is it an interesting like train wreck to watch? 100%. And technically, I think it's fairly well made. In fact, John Woo was initially going to be, he was initially attached to direct this one. Backed out and did something. He, he, I think he did Face Off, actually. But um, the whole oh, I love that is, movie. Oh, it's great. It's fantastic. Um, I actually know uh, Dominique Swain. She's uh, she was in Face Off. So uh, I'll try to get her on the show. But anyway, um, yeah, dude, the whole set is literally flooded. So it's kind of like an interesting watch just to see technically how they made it. Um, and in terms of disaster films, I could keep going day after tomorrow. I mean, it really goes on the core, but we'll just leave it at that. All of these movies are streaming on Amazon, I'm sure. So if uh, if you're so inclined after you survive a disaster, these are the movies to kind of like escape to because they're all bad and enjoyably good. What about awesome. the movie Glitter? That was a disaster. How about that one? That is, uh, see, the problem with that is that's such a disaster. Like you will not feel, actually, you probably will feel better about your life having survived. So that's you a know, really good, that's a good, we should team up on, uh, on some movies here and figure out some picks because that one is the fucking biggest disaster ever. That really next, was. I next remember to Ishtar. All the all the. When did that? <laughs> what year did that come out again? What glitter? glitter? Yeah. God, what two thousand one, two thousand two thousand? It's it's pretty forgettable. That, we can say any number. I just around. remember everybody was like, "Oh my god, that's going to be so great." Yeah, you and were like was, six, yeah. right? When that movie came out, Danny, you like Griffith six? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. You were totally sick. Well, Holy Anthony, Getty. thank you so much. Oh, by the yeah. way, we got uh, Anthony is uh, I. You know, I, I always talk about him on South Park, but he's actually uh, a writer, and he just got the. You're you're now writing uh, uh, the tomato. Uh, Man, you are really awesome, bro. I. You know <laughs> what I. I I, 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 when I have to get up and walk toward the router, I lose my mind. No, 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 uh, no. Yeah, I, I, uh, actually, up in, here, up in here. Last year, I was uh, honored. It's not fried to be... green tomatoes. Yes, it's I know the that. Sequel. <laughs> it's the sequel to uh, it's fried green tomatoes. Yeah, it's uh, it's actually <laughs> it's uh, it's but it's the uh, albino cauliflower version uh, <laughs> starring Nicki Minaj. Yeah, I'm going to have to like uh, <laughs> talk to Carrie about this because uh, you know, she's got some interesting <laughs> tidbits about the privilege of the white broccoli. No, you, I don't know. But anyway, yeah, so, so doing, I was uh I I are you doing the blob? Was, sorry? Or what are you doing? What are you doing yes, the blob? Yes, or I'm doing Invaders from Mars. Nice. <laughs> You're killing me right now. No, no, you're uh, killing me. Uh, I am no. killing you. I'm uh, I was approached to write the reboot of Attack of the Killer Tomatoes, and I was like, oh, my God. I was right about the, the vegetable. 
It's a proof. <laughs> kinda. I mean, we had a whole dialogue about it, but I'm fucking with you, kinda. Uh, um, no, no, no. Uh, yeah, so I was approached to write it, and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm so honored. And you found the right guy. And yeah, so uh, I killed myself. It was uh, 45 days. I mean, I have like a vlog, not published, but for me, because uh, my kid at the time was teething, and it was my first kid. So I was watching him during the day, Mr. Mom Styles. By the way, one of my favorite movies. Um, and it was just a real like traumatic experience as a first time dad, but also at 10 p.m. to 4 a.m. in the morning for 45 days straight, sleeping for maybe four or five hours a day, working on this reboot that I, I love the franchise, right? So anyway, I banged it out and it was 60 pages over that they asked for, but I just said, hey, I'm gonna give you a bunch of shit. I'm just like gonna do an info dump and we can always scale back. And uh, it got approved, and it's moving forward. Pandemic hit, but there's some movement. So, yeah, the end. <laughs> I'm looking forward to that. Fantastic. Yes, and thank you, Danny, for the uh, wonderful introduction on that. I pre appreciate. Oh no, no problem. I, you're, I, I was going to say Attack of the Fried Green Killer Tomatoes, starring Jessica Tandy, but. <laughs> oh God, bless her! Are you kidding me? Oh, yeah. Now I want to make that film. Yeah, it's so, it's, it, it's so interesting that I, I wrote like a 182-page script, which is very uh, telling to how much I, I speak during these segments. So you can imagine it was a fucking phone book. Uh, Danny, yeah, I, I got to run. Read it. All right, buddy. Guys, I gotta thank go you pick, so much. I got to go pick up my daughter. I did leave a clip to a link. Uh, I was in Wonder Woman. And, uh, oh, nice. so that, yeah, yeah, you'll, you'll really enjoy the version that I did. So I'm leaving that. I got to run. You guys have fun. I'm out of town. Bye. Very right, pleasure. Linda Thank Carter, you. first crush. Oh, you <laughs> son of a gun. Oh, that's there Gal Gadot. <laughs> I'll, I'll run that. I just want to watch her. No that's way. Gal Gadot. <laughs> Am I hot? <laughs> oh my God. Gal Gadot. Oh, that, yeah, that is horrible. Try that sleeping horrible. tonight. Good night, boys. Oh, I will. Good night, buddy. That's, uh... Everyone, thanks for for tuning into the show. We love you all. Uh, we will have better reception next time. Uh, Jay, thank you so much. Thanks, uh, uh, every Kevin and uh, guys, I love you all. Let's. Uh, we're gonna see. We're, I can't wait to read your script. By the way, Anthony. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. Thank yeah, you so uh, much. Wait, wait, wait. I'm literally gonna bang out a fried green tomatoes two script for you in like <laughs> like an hour. I'll just pass it off. You won't remember that it's the different script. You'll be like, oh cool. Fuck yeah. <laughs> like Jessica Tandy fucking is back. Yeah. Nice. Facial reconstruction CGI. No, <laughs> All right, guys. Have a good night. And guys, uh, please tune in, tell your friends, donate, whatever you can do. Uh, there's there'll be links. Uh, after the show. Thank you guys so much. Have Be a good well. Night. Nice Thank to you. see you, buddy. Jay, pleasure. Anthony, congrats. Danny, till Be next well. time. Don't take care. See ya. Nope. Uh. <laughs>